Do you like scary movies? The butchery? The gore? The violence? The horror? There's nothing quite like an unstoppable killer who slowly walks towards you before burying some rusty old weapon into the top of your head and letting the blood drip down over your eyes, making the last thing you ever see a masked killer covered in a sea of your own blood. If this thought sends shivers down your spine and makes you fear for your life, then that's fine. It's Halloween. Everyone's entitled to one good scare. The murderer has a strength of 7, perception of 5, endurance of 10, charisma of 2, intelligence of 1, agility 1, and luck 3. Splitting open skulls like melons requires a great deal of strength, so this character starts with it at 7, and it will be increased slightly later on as well. Perception has been set at 5, as this helps to represent the murderer's skill as a hunter, tracking down his targets with his keen senses. Endurance is maxed out at 10. You can shoot the murderer as many times as you want, but he'll just keep slowly walking towards you, his hands soaked in blood, and a slight glimmer in his eyes betraying the horrors that he is about to force upon you. Charisma, intelligence, and agility are all very low for this build. The murderer is slow, silent, and unthinking, so these three stats have no influence over him. Charisma is only at 2, so that, once we get the bobblehead, you'll be able to grab Lone Wanderer to make this character more powerful. Luck is at 3, in order for us to get Bloody Mess, making this build nice and gory. Bloody Mess can often be a bit OTT in terms of how it looks, but for this build that is perfect. You want your enemies to be exploding in a shower of blood that terrifies everyone who witnesses it. The essential perks for this character are Big Leagues, Heavy Gunner, Cannibal, and Bloody Mess. Your main weapons are the Machete and Harpoon Gun. Big Leagues and Heavy Gunner will ensure these weapons are dishing out plenty of damage to everyone you encounter. Cannibal really adds to the horrific nature of this build. Not only will he butcher you limb from limb, but as the last gasp of life escapes your lips, he will start to devour your warm flesh as it still shivers in terror. After all, you will taste so much better when you're afraid. As mentioned before, Bloody Mess is here primarily for the gore, but the flat damage boost is also very helpful, as you do use multiple weapon types. The recommended perks are Iron Fist, Blacksmith, Rooted, Adamantium Skeleton, and Lone Wanderer. Iron Fist is here simply because the meat hook is too reminiscent of the hook used by the killer in I Know What You Did Last Summer, but I couldn't resist including the weapon. I decided to just put this as a backup weapon however, as it's unfortunately not that great, and overall unarmed isn't particularly well developed in Fallout 4. Blacksmith however is a great skill that's going to let you mod out most of your weapons to ensure they inflict as much damage as possible. Rooted works very well for this build, as the murderer doesn't charge towards people. Instead, he stands still, watching his target before standing next to them and slicing their throat open. Whenever you are standing still, you will get a bonus to damage and damage reduction, which makes this perk incredibly useful. You will need to invest some points into strength in order to reach this, but those points will help you out anyway, so it's not much of a drawback. Adamantium Skeleton is not only going to be really helpful by preventing your limbs from getting crippled, but also helps to showcase the murderer as a horror movie antagonist. You can stab him, shoot him, and even blow him up, but it won't even slow him down. He's coming to kill you, and nothing will stop him. As we all know, Lone Wanderer is an incredibly powerful perk, so it's worth grabbing. You won't ever travel with a companion, so the benefits will be constant. The role-playing perks are Night Person, Aquaboy, and Ghoulish. The murderer strikes at the dead of night, and Night Person makes him even more deadly during this time. It's only a role-playing perk, as the benefits aren't really that great, but the intelligence boost does help to make up for the low intelligence of the build. Aquaboys has been put here mostly as a reference to Jason Voorhees, 
the main inspiration for the build. But also, the thought of a killer silently approaching you from the water is kind of terrifying. Put a single foot even near the water, and your life is as good as over. Ghoulish is here as the murderer is horribly disfigured, and has not been remotely human for a long time. He is more similar to a feral ghoul than any human walking the wastes. Not a lot is known about the murderer. At some point he was in the military, and something must have made him stand out to some of the top brass, as he was selected for an experimental procedure. Not much is currently known about this procedure, or who conducted it, but it did not go as planned. The murderer was horrifically wounded by it, but also became inhumanly resilient, able to withstand any punishment. In addition, he became consumed with rage, and a desire to kill which could not be controlled. Originally, those involved attempted to kill the murderer, but they were unable to, meaning instead they tried to completely wipe his brain, destroying what little intelligence he had, and making him forget everything that happened to him. It was after this failed experiment that it was decided that selected individuals should be searched for to create the kill squad, instead of trying to create super soldiers. The murderer was then dumped at sea in secret, eventually washing ashore near Boston, and being found by a highly sympathetic female lawyer, who took him in and nursed him to health. This lawyer ended up deciding to marry the murderer, and together they had a son. The murderer remained silent throughout almost all of this, but he didn't appear to have the same murderous rage that was added to him. That is until the bombs fall. Witnessing the nuclear annihilation of so many people will re-trigger the rage that was once inside of him, meaning that as soon as he awakens from cryosleep, he will immediately kill everyone in his path. This build doesn't have any factions, as he kills without caring who the person even is. Kill everyone you can from each of the factions without remorse. This build doesn't include any companions, as you will be using Lone Wanderer. In addition, none of the characters really fit in with the kill everyone theme of this build. Strong comes the closest, but even he didn't feel quite right. The armour for this build is a sack hood, raider levers and full leather armour. The sack hood helps keep the murderer expressionless, but also has a similar look to the makeshift mask Jason uses in Friday the 13th Part 2. If you want to, you can wear one of the variations of this bow if you prefer the look. I spent a lot of time wearing the sack hood with straps. The raider levers really help sort out the look of this build, making the character look more rough and damaged. Finally, full leather armour help with resistances, but also just make the character look a bit more complete by covering him up a bit. The two essential weapons of this build are a machete and harpoon gun. These two weapons are great fun to use. The machete is an iconic horror movie weapon that will happily assist in chopping up anyone you see. The harpoon gun is an incredibly powerful weapon that lets you shoot people with harpoons. I honestly don't think I need to explain or justify the inclusion of this weapon any further. The additional weapons for this build are the meat hook, pole hook, flamer, and any crippling or kneecapper legendary drops. The meat hook and pole hook are a pair of very powerful looking weapons, that are quite fun to kill people with. The flamer gives you another ranged weapon, and also lets you cook your victims before you eat them. Finally, crippling and kneecapper weapons are included here, as there's something incredibly nice about wounding your victims from a distance to stop them from being able to run, and then slowly walking towards them with some form of hook or machete to pull them apart piece by piece whilst they're unable to do anything to stop you. Kill everyone you see. Try to not engage in any conversation, but if you do want to do some quests and play a little more conventionally, then get yourself a standard outfit, something like the farmhand clothes, for whenever you are going to talk to someone. Other than this though, just enjoy going truly barbaric within the Commonwealth, and playing the game in a way you normally wouldn't. Shit. 
Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to comment below with your thoughts on this build, or with what your favourite horror movie is. I hope you all enjoy yourselves over Halloween, but remember, be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> I can't wait to see the crows feeding on that scumbag. Here, this is for you. Now, if you ever need to trade, my shop's open.